Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's Expedition Crew News Conference. Joining us today are members of the Expedition 27 and 28 crews. The three will launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on March 30th, arriving at the International Space Station on April 1st. We'll start with introductions and then take questions. First, let me introduce astronaut Ron Guerin. Ron was born in Yonkers, New York. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Economics from the State University of New York College at Oneonta and holds master's degrees from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and the University of Florida. He is also a retired colonel from the U.S. Air Force. He was selected as a pilot by NASA in July 2000 and completed his first spaceflight in 2008 on STS-124 as a mission specialist too for ascent and entry. He has also logged more than 13 days in space and 20 hours and 32 minutes of spacewalking experience in three EVAs. We'll turn it over now to Ron to introduce his crewmates. Thanks, Nicole. Um, good afternoon. I uh, just want to introduce my crewmates. Uh, to my left there is uh, the commander of the Soyuz spacecraft, Alexander Samokotaev. And uh, Alexander is a lieutenant colonel in the uh, Russian Air Force. He's a former test pilot, was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003, and has been training uh, since then to, uh, for his uh, first mission. Uh, which we're about to embark on. His uh, wife, Oksana, and, and daughter, Anastasia, are here with us today, so welcome to you. Um, the commander of the space station for Increment 28 is Andrei Boroshenko, uh, to, to Alexander's uh, left. Uh, Andrei graduated from the uh, Leningrad Military and Mechanical Institute, and he is also in the uh, cosmonaut class of 2003, and he went to work for Energia, and was involved in some of the motion control for the Mir space, uh, Mir space Station and also was a uh, shift flight director at uh, Mission Control Moscow. And so together we are the uh, Expedition 27 and 28 crew. All right, thank you so much, Ron. We'll start with questions here from the Johnson Space Center and we'll start on this side. If you'll state your name and affiliation. Hey, thank you very much. I'm Mark Corot, and I'm representing Aviation Week and Space Technology. I believe my question is for Ron, but anyone else involved uh, would be welcome. I want to ask you about um, Dragon operations during your time on the space station and kind of what you what you train for and what you sort of anticipate at this point, if, if anything. Uh, well, that's, that's a good question, uh, one that we don't have an answer for right now. Um, we are trained all the way through capture and mating of the Dragon capsule, and for me that's uh, really exciting to do that. I was involved in the source selection for the, what's, what's known as the uh, commercial orbital transportation system, so it's you know, really exciting for me to see this uh, commercialization of space uh, take root in these first few steps here. What we're actually going to do is uh, to be determined yet, so we're uh, looking at that. There is some discussion about combining uh, two of the demo missions into one mission, uh, and what time frame that will be is still under discussion as well. So uh, to answer your question, we are trained all the way through the operations of mating if it, if it comes down to that. Uh, if you were um, on orbit and uh, they made a decision to do some of the, you know, to, to bring it in, berth it, uh, would you have to do additional training or would it be just sort of refresher training while you were already on the space station? Would that, have you work that out if it became necessary or or are you kind of good to go as it were? Well, we're, we're good to go. We would do refresher training on board. We have the facilities on board to uh, practice uh, the robotic operations that would be necessary. So we would build up our proficiency by using the onboard traders that we have. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, I believe that your launch will uh, kick off the Russia's celebrations for um, the 50th anniversary of, of human space flight, of, of Yuri Gagarin's flight. I wonder if you could share um, as a crew what your um, what what activities are being planned to support that, uh, both in relation to your launch and then on the anniversary itself from space. Okay, yeah, I think we'll each t take a turn answering that because I think that's a really important question. Um, for us, this is obviously a, a, you know, a very big event. This is something that we really want to uh, recognize. And um, we, you know, way back when we were in training, we realized that 
we were going to coincide with this very important historic moment. And so that's why we included that in our patch design for the Expedition 28 patch. And as you see, the, the Soyuz patch as well included that. So we got permission from the uh, families of Yuri Gagarin and Alan Shepard to include their names on our patch in recognition of these historic events. So it's something that's really, really important to us. Um, you know, I, I back, you know, 50 years ago on April 12th, um, you know, we as a species became different. You know, we were no longer confined to the uh, to the Earth, and I think that was a you know pivotal pivotal moment in in the history of humanity. And I think it's you know well worth recognizing this. Um, and uh, I'll just turn it over to my crewmates because there's a great deal of celebrations planned. There's a great deal of activities planned both in the U.S. and in Russia, and actually around the world. Для нас, как представителей государства, откуда был выполнен первый полет человека в космос, этот чествование, этого праздника уже начались, потому что, наверное, все знаете, что решением правительства Российской Федерации 2011 год был назначен годом космоса в России. Поэтому для нас он уже начался 1 января. Естественно, для нас большая честь то, что мы являемся первым экипажем, пилотируемым экипажем в этом году, который будет стартовать с космодрома Байконур. Наш старт намечен с площадки, с Гагаринской площадки, так называемой, с той самой, с которой 50 лет назад стартовал Юрий Алексеевич Гагарин. Единственная разница небольшая во времени. Мы планируем стартовать 30 марта, а не 12 апреля, как это было 50 лет назад. Но нам очень приятно, и мы очень гордимся. Этим доверием. Uh, well, uh, we represent uh, the country that uh, sent the first human into space. So the celebrations in our country have already begun. And uh, as you probably know, the Russian government uh, declared 2011 the year of human space flight. So uh, this year has already started for us, as well as uh, the celebrations. And of course, for us, it is a great honor to be uh, the first uh, piloted crew this year, the first crew that, that uh, will launch from uh, Baikonur and we are going to launch from uh, Gagarin pad. This is uh, the exact same launch pad uh, uh, where Yuri Gagarin um, launched into space for the first time. Uh, but uh, our uh, time, however, is different. We're going to do that uh, on the 30th of March, not on the 12th of April. And uh, of course, as I have mentioned, we are very glad and uh, proud. Okay. Я хотел бы добавить, что 30 числа, когда у нас намечен пуск, на Байконуре будет огромное количество гостей, очень большое количество журналистов. Предполагается, что будет так много гостей, что сейчас уже приходится, администрация просит заранее предоставлять списки, чтобы не было бы проблем с размещением. Поэтому интерес проявлен очень, очень большой к нашему пуску. Uh, well, I would also like to add that uh, our launch is going to happen on the 30th of March and uh, there will be a lot of guests uh, uh, there in Baikonur. Uh, there will be media, uh, other visitors, uh, so the uh, uh, Baikonur administration has requested to submit a guest list in advance so that they're able to accommodate everyone. So um, the um, there is a great interest to this event. Ну, а когда мы будем находиться на борту, мы безусловно будем участвовать во всех мероприятиях, которые в которых потребуется наше участие по работе со средствами массовой информации. Ну, заранее сейчас пока мы не можем сказать, какие именно мероприятия для нас будут запланированы, но мы понимаем, что этих мероприятий будет очень много. And uh, also once we are aboard the station, we will definitely be participating in all the uh, public affairs events. I cannot tell you right now what events we'll take part in because uh, uh, they are not uh, planned at this point, but we'll definitely be participating in them. Uh, Jim Oberg with NBC News and for the commander. 
you will be commanding the spaceship Gagarin. Is that your call sign, or do you have another call sign, Posidnia, another call sign for the Soyuz? A good question. Дело в том, что надпись, которая планируется нанести на обтекатель нашего корабля, это будет просто надпись Юрий Гагарин, символизирующая имя первого человека, покорившего космос. Но никак это не связано с позывным или именем собственным нашего корабля. Корабль, как и ранее, будет носить номерное наименование, то есть он у нас идет под двумя вариантами названий, и порядок исчисления не будет меняться. А позывной наш мы выбрали все вместе, и он будет называться Тарханы. 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 Это очень хороший вопрос. Наш корабль будет дезигнирован в специальной форме. Будет имя Юрия Гагарина на нем. Но это не станет нашим колл-сайном, и это также не имя нашего корабля. Мы оставим наш типичный номер для нашего корабля. И, в принципе, у нас есть два варианта the ship's name, so this uh, will stay the same. As far as uh, the call sign is concerned, uh, it will be Tarhan. Jill Tolk, representing Bay Area Houston Magazine. Question for Andre. Uh, you were a flight director at MCC Moscow, and now, of course, you're a cosmonaut flying on the ISS. What is it like for you to have worked both sides of space flight operations? Or what will it be like for you to do? Маленькое уточнение. Я был сменом руководителем полета в ЦУПе Москва. Я рад, что судьба доставила мне возможность посмотреть на нашу работу с обеих сторон, со стороны Земли и со стороны экипажа. И мне представляется, что, возможно, нашему экипажу будут, будет несколько легче работать наверху, вследствие того, что я достаточно хорошо представляю работу на Земле и понимаю, как... Стоит организовывать работу на борту для того, чтобы нам было бы легче работать вместе одной командой. Um, well, I'd like to clarify. I actually uh, worked as a shift flight director in um, MCC Moscow, and uh, I'm very grateful to uh, have the opportunity to um, have worked and uh, to be working on both sides as. Uh, a ground support team and also as uh, ISS crew. I think that uh, this uh, will make things much easier for me once uh, we are on board the ISS. It will be easier to work since, uh, like I said, I uh, know both sides, I know what it is like to be on the ground and I think uh, therefore I will be able to better organize uh, our activities on board the station. And uh, I think overall it will make uh, our work on ISS much easier and smoother. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark Caro for Aviation Week again. Could you uh, discuss any spacewalks that fall under your mission and kind of what duties would transpire and when even approximately they're planned for? Thank you. Okay, I'll talk about the uh, U.S. spacewalks. Uh, right now, during uh, the increment 27 and 28 time frame, the only planned spacewalk is during the STS-135 time frame. Uh, during that mission, um, uh, Mike Fossum and I are planned on doing that spacewalk. Those are spacewalks with the, the ISS crew. Now, STS-134, which will also be during our time frame, has four uh, EVAs, four spacewalks with the uh, STS-134 crew, which we will be supporting. And uh, I'll let my Russian uh, colleagues talk about the Russian EVAs. 
То, что касается российского выхода, у нас запланирован один выход с российского сегмента. Сейчас мы проходим подготовку по этому выходу. И во время этого выхода планируется установить научную аппаратуру и провести работы на внешней стороне снаружи станции для того, чтобы облегчить работу в дальнейших выходах. Не только наших, но и которые последуют после нас в следующих экспедициях. Uh, well, we're planning on having one Russian EVA, so there will be one uh, spacewalk from the Russian segment. Right now we're being trained for uh, this spacewalk, and uh, during this spacewalk we're planning on installing certain uh, science hardware, and also we're planning to perform uh, activities uh, on the external side of the station uh, so that uh, future EVAs, uh, uh, the EVAs that uh, next uh, future increments will be performing are uh, easier in the future. Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com again um, for Ron. Uh, last night during the State of the Union, President Obama cited uh, a Sputnik moment as, uh, and the launch of the space race as a catalyst for getting students in, interested in science education. Um, what plans uh, are, do, do your crew have to, um, to extend education as a national goal for, for both Russia and the United States um, through, your, through your work with students from the space station? Well, our, our mission is going to be chock full of education outreach activities. That's one of the big things that we're going to be doing. Um, but, you know, let me just step back for a second and, and just tell, tell a story about how the space program affected my own educational background. And, you know, I was a, I was a young high school student in Yonkers, New York, and, um, you know, I had dreamed ever since the first moon landing to become an astronaut. But during that time frame when I was getting ready to go to college, as far as I was concerned, this kid from, from Yonkers, you know, we didn't have a space program. It was after Skylab, it was before the first space shuttle mission. And so I went off to college really not knowing what I wanted to do with my life. When I was a sophomore in college, we had the first space shuttle mission. And the very next day, I went to my advisor and I started taking math and science courses and started pursuing a degree in engineering because that re reawakened this dream that I had since I was a young child of flying in space and getting interested in space. So from a personal experience, you know, I could tell just the fact that we are in space and we're doing what we're doing and we're doing the amazing things on the space station that we're doing, you know, that, that I think is an inspiration to, to young students. But we're not going to just, you know, that's not enough for us. We, we, you know, the science that we're doing on board, not only does it affect the Earth, it, you know, not only does it allow us to go further and further in the solar system, but it also, you know, really helps us on the, on the planet. But, you know, we are not, going to just, you know, keep that a secret, you know, we are going to, you know, use that in our education outreach. We're going to describe the science that we're doing on board to students. We're going to allow students to participate in, in, whenever we can in those uh, scientific experiments. We have a thing called Saturday Morning Science where, where students submit uh, experiments that we, that we uh, as the crew, conduct on board. So we have, you know, I could spend a couple of hours, you know, describing all the different educational outreach of, out, outreach events that we have planned, uh, not just for our mission, but for all the missions, so that we can help that next generation be ready for all the, the, the big things that they're going to be doing. Jim Oberg again. Uh, we're hearing about things you're doing for other people. I want to ask the three of you what you're going to do for yourselves. Ron, you're going to have more time than 13 days on orbit, and I want to ask some of the things that you, you didn't have time to do last time. And for the other crew members, uh, what do you look forward to? What do you look forward to doing for the first time that people have told you about? What things are you going to do f for your own pleasure? Huh? I think the big thing for me is the, you know, what this mission will provide me is the ability to process the experience as it's happening. So on a space shuttle mission, you know, you're just up there for a couple of weeks and it's, you know, it's very, very busy and you've trained and trained for these very specific tasks that you're going to do. And, you know, it's a wonderful experience, but it, it's over so fast that you really, it almost seems like a dream when it's all over that it happens so fast. So being up there for almost six months, 
you know, we will have the opportunity to eventually, when we get used to living there, when we when we settle into a routine there, to be able, you know, it will become normal for us. You know, we will not be visitors to space. We will be residents of space, and we will be able to experience that on a day-to-day -day basis and to really process that experience. And I think that it will be a deeper experience because of that. Окей, okay, well, uh, я, наверное, uh, <laughs> с трудом дополню больше того, что сказал Рон, потому что uh, в своей, так сказать, повседневной рабочей деятельности uh, пилота, как и Рон, мы очень сходимся во мнениях. Uh, единственное, что могу дополнить, что я, наверное, с нетерпением жду uh, посмотреть на Землю в иллюминатор. Мне кажется, это волшебное впечатление, которое испытывает человек, первый раз глядя на нашу планету и, как говорят, очень-очень-очень красивую из космоса. Down on the Earth from space, I think it is a truly a magical moment uh, to be doing it for the first time from space. And uh, as they say, our Earth looks very, very beautiful from there. Ну, я могу сказать от себя, что для меня, э, так же как и для Саши, это полет первый, и э, для, для меня, наверное, любая работа будет крайне интересной, потому что она будет новой. Но я предполагаю, по рассказам уже летавших космонавтов, что э, очень интересно фотографировать Землю и ловить интересные снимки э, земной поверхности. Я видел разные фотографии, выполненные в разное время разными космонавтами. Мне кажется, что достаточно трудно найти э, какие-то свои интересные снимки, но я очень постараюсь это сделать. Это первое. И второе, э, значит, я надеюсь, совместно с наземной группой управления э, Московской э, провести некоторые эксперименты, по, э, которые будут направлены на э, выработку методик э, управления э, дальними э, космическими полетами пилотируемыми на Марс, на другие планеты Солнечной системы. Там э, есть над чем поработать, есть что проверить. Uh, due to this, any activity that we'll be doing there, any work will be interesting for me because any task will be new. Um, of course, I um, will enjoy taking pictures of Earth. I think it is uh, a very interesting and uh, indescribable uh, experience. I uh, have seen many pictures taken by other uh, cosmonauts and astronauts taken at different times, so I think it will be uh, quite difficult for me to um, take unique uh, pictures. However, uh, I will uh, try to accomplish that. And uh, secondly, I'm planning on uh, doing certain work with the uh, uh, ground control team in Moscow. We'll be doing experiments to develop methodology to uh, control and monitor human space flights to Mars and beyond. Uh, Mark Rowe uh, for Aviation Week again, and mine's for Ron Guerin. Can you sort of discuss the volume and pace of science activities overall? I know you can't delve into each experiment, but, but sort of what you're anticipating as far as workload and, and how much attention and time you can devote to science? Well, you know, we we are just starting the you know the pure utilization phase of the of the space station. So with you know the increase to a six-person crew, that affords us a lot more time to do science. So, um, you know, the exact percentages, you know, I don't know what it's going to be. It, it all depends on you know the other things that are going on. We are going to have uh, a lot of visiting vehicles that are going to take up a lot of time. We do have uh, spacewalks, so all of that has to be has to be figured into our timeline. 
But, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to all of those different experiments that we're going to be doing, you know, the material science, the combustion research, the, the research on the human body, um, all those things that, that we're going to be doing. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing the results of those things. And, you know, in some cases, um, we're what I would call lab assistants, and in other cases, we're lab rats, where we're, we're kind of the, uh, what the experiment is being conducted on. And so, you know, you, we have the opportunity to, to participate and to contribute in, in both those aspects. Um, so a significant portion of the day is going to be taken up with, you know, one of those two types of uh, assistance with the experiments. And, um, you know, pretty much, you know, every day there's going to be something, something going on in the science department. So we're looking forward to that. Any other follow-ups on this side? Yes. <laughs> uh, first for Ron, you you had a marvelous uh, blog last year, mm -hmm. Co very insightful comments about your training in Moscow and Baikonur, and, and I hope you're going to start that again. And I hope other others may continue uh, Colonel uh, Kondratiev's blog, which is also very helpful. So will, will you be blogging uh, from orbit? That which of you will be blogging? Uh, from orbit. Yeah, um, I, I, what you're referring to is a website that I started called Fragile Oasis, and the goals of that site are, um, well, we have a number of them, one is to allow people to kind of live vicariously and ex have this experience with us, uh, to, what it, you know, to know and to see and to experience what it, what it is to live and work uh, on orbit, and so uh, that's one of the big things, but you know, not just as spectators, you know, we want them to be participants in it. So we have a number of interactive things that we're going to do with the site. Um, you know, another big goal is going to be to, you know, use the unique orbital perspective to shine a light on some of the challenges facing our planet. And so that's a, that's another big part of it. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to do it as much as much as I can, as much as the timeline allows, uh, because I really feel that that you know is an important thing. I feel a responsibility as as uh, I think everybody does who has this you know privilege of flying in space to be able to share that as best we can with as many people as we can. So I'm going to I'm going to do my best to to do that. Um, another big aspect that we're trying to do with that is going back to the other questions about education outreach. Is there going to be a very big education outreach uh, part of that. Um, so, yes, we're going to try and blog, we're going to try and send out as many pictures, as many videos, and to really, as best we can, uh, get everybody on board and, and get everybody to participate with, uh, in the mission with us. Yeah, and the others? Uh, will you try to blog? Я думаю, что мы сейчас пока сложно сказать, будем ли мы писать именно блог или будем в какой-то другой форме делиться нашими впечатлениями. Но, безусловно, мы постараемся это сделать и попытаемся мобилизовать все наши способности и все наше красноречие, чтобы передать все то, что мы увидим на борту станции и рассказать о своих впечатлениях. Well, uh, sharing our uh, experience in any uh, other form, but certainly we'll try uh, do, to do this, and uh, uh, I can uh, say for sure that we're going to use all our resources, all our eloquence to uh, share uh, our impressions of uh, living aboard ISS. Okay, seeing no further questions, that will conclude our briefing. For more information on the International Space Station and its crews, please visit our website at www.nasa.gov station. Thank you.